Well, good evening. My name is Sharon, and wherever you are joining us from this evening, I want to welcome you. I hope you are a little bit warmer than we are in South Africa at the moment. But this evening, I'd like to just be able to share with you something about perfect love. And how do I love thee? How do I love thee is the title of a poem that was written by the English poet Elizabeth Barrett Browning in her 43rd sonnet, How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I won't read the whole poem, but I was reminded of the title when I recently read 1 Corinthians 13, the famous chapter on love. For many of us who have loved and been loved imperfectly, God's love can be a difficult concept to know and believe and understand. Perfect love casts out all fear can be so easy to gloss over quickly as we perhaps had no concept of what perfect love looks like, let alone just our ordinary imperfect love. I've read 1 Corinthians 13 so many times and heard it taught in so many varieties of contexts. But when I read it recently, it felt to me like a telephone conversation that I was having with a loved one. I was reminded of the telephone conversations I used to have with my husband when we were still courting. In those days, there were no cell phones. So I guess that already ages me a bit. <clears throat> We had one landline which was in a pretty public space and calls were fairly expensive. Only one service provider in those days. We could chat for hours about our lives, what we thought and how we felt about one another and how we couldn't wait to see one another again. My parents used to get wild about me being on the phone for so long. And what did we talk about for so long anyway? <laughs> Well, there was no way I was going to tell them what we spoke about. But what I can remember was that it was such a precious time and that it filled us until we could see one another again. And it was also reciprocal. I would share something and he would comment and then he would share and I would add something too. I had that same picture in my mind when I read this verse from 1 Corinthians 3 sorry, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7. It felt to me like a telephone conversation with Jesus. And I wanted to know what his love for me looked like in terms that my mind and my heart could understand. <clears throat> so in the NIV, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7 says, Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Now, I guess because I'm a bit of an English student, um, I wanted to know in a little bit more detail. So I had a look in the Amplified, and of course the Amplified amplifies things. So it looked like this. Love bears all things regardless of what comes. Believes all things, looking for the best in each one hopes all things, remaining steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. Love never fails. Suddenly it was like a mirror had been held up to my own heart and I could see some of the ways in which my love had been imperfect, not only towards others, but also towards the Lord. I saw the difficulties and hardships of the last year, and I saw my heart's reaction to them all. So the conversation went something like this. Lord, I can see that I haven't had a perfect love. I haven't been able to bear all things, regardless of what came. And at times it felt as though I crumbled. I wasn't able to believe all things, looking for the best in each one. And there were even times that I didn't believe the best about you. My faith felt like the waves being tossed about by the wind. And I had questions and prayers that didn't seem to be answered. There were times that I lost my hope and forgot to look for your promises and your words over me with expectation of victory. 
and I know that it felt as though I didn't really remain steadfast. Even though it may have looked like it on the outside, I was on shaky ground on the inside, and I felt like my inner world was unstable. And lastly, Lord, I didn't endure all things without weakening. I felt weak, physically, mentally, and spiritually, and I feel as though I failed you and failed myself. My love for you has not been perfect love. So perhaps your experience recently has been a little different, but maybe some of you can identify. And then there was his gentle, loving response. God is love. Do you remember I bore all things regardless of what came and bore it to my death on the cross for you, for love? I believed in you from the foundation of the world and chose you to know me and love me back. I hope all things for you. And I remain steadfast in my confidence in you and will not allow you to stumble and fall. I endured all things without weakening through trials and temptation so that you could trust in me because I never fail. What an amazing love. He knows our weaknesses and imperfections and he loves us despite them all. So how can we love him back? when we feel so deeply on the inside that we are incapable of that perfect love. Well, he gives us insight into how we can receive his love and love him back perfectly in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. We also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. This is not just about character building and how suffering can shape it, even though we know it is valuable and the Lord uses it in our lives, but more about how even in that time of suffering, he pours out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. He comes to help. He puts his love in our hearts. And in fact, he pours it out through the power of the Holy Spirit and enables us to love him back with that same love he poured out inside us. And he's able to do this through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives whom we received when we believed in Jesus Christ and the completed work of the cross. When I read this, I had a picture in my mind of a large glass bottle filled with oil and it was pouring out into hearts. But I also had a picture of the same bottle, but this time with a stopper in the spout so that nothing could flow. So what would prevent his love from flowing outward? And what would prevent us from receiving his love? I recently listened to someone teaching about heart sickness and what makes us lose hope and takes us into doubt and unbelief. He reminded his audience about the two questions that the enemy uses to instigate heart sickness. The first one is, did God really say I'm sure that you'll remember that this comes from Genesis where the serpent was tempting Eve. And when he said, did God really say, he caused Eve to think that God was withholding something good from her. And this led her into distrust and unbelief that his word and character are true. And then the second question was this. The first thing Satan said to Jesus when he was tempting him in the wilderness, he said, if you are the son of God. And so doubt was cast onto Jesus's identity as God's son. If we were to sit and think carefully, 
Perhaps many struggles that we endure result from these two questions, knowing who God is for us and knowing who we are in God. And these could be two major stoppers in that bottle that could prevent us from receiving God's love and from pouring out love back to him in return. Maybe you've never even thought of loving God back and what that would look like. There's a lot in the Bible about Jesus being the bridegroom and his church as the bride. And what would it look like to not just have a telephone conversation with him from afar, like I did all those years ago, but to be in his presence face to face and able to receive his love and pour it back. Or perhaps you might have had a similar reaction to Eve. Maybe you feel God is holding out on me. My prayers haven't been answered. And so maybe God isn't listening. And that must mean that he doesn't love me. Can you hear how these thought patterns could be used by the enemy to take us into that place of doubting God and preventing us from trusting in him and receiving his love? There's a beautiful scripture in Proverbs 4.23. I'll just read it quickly. It's very well known and we've heard it so often. Above all else, guard your heart or watch over your heart for everything you do flows from it. Our earthly love is easily influenced by circumstances and situations of life. And it so easily sets conditions around which it will or it won't believe, or it will trust or not trust and function. It's a place where it seems that what we see becomes what we believe. The storm is raging, the sand is shifting, and the house sometimes does fall flat. Could it be that we have forgotten our first love and who he is and what he's saying about us? Has our love become maybe a to-do list, expecting him to move when we present it to him without relationship? Could you maybe ask this question? Lord, how do I love thee? Would our reaction to his love be different if we knew that we could totally trust him for the outcome because he never fails? And if we believed that his specific purpose for our lives was part of his perfect love, would it help to cast all fear from our lives because perfect love casts out fear? Perhaps then we could know that we are able to bear all things, believe all things, hope all things and endure all things because of his perfect love. Perhaps we could ask him to pour out his love again so that we could love him back regardless of our circumstances. And we can. So Lord, how do I love thee? Perhaps you've been praying and crying out to the Lord for your answer which hasn't come through yet. And maybe there's been some heart sickness. Do you know that the Lord is waiting for you? Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18 says, So the Lord must wait for you to come to him, so he can show you, not his discipline, not his justice, not anything that would come across in a, a, a very harsh way, but so he can show you his love and compassion. For the Lord is a faithful God, Blessed are those who wait for his help. So as we go now into ministry time, would you just keep your hearts in that place of saying, Lord, how do I love thee? And maybe there are some things that you would like to bring to him and to his attention. So we're going to end off now with this, with this word and... Would you just stay in that place of bringing your heart to the Lord as we go into ministry time?